The 1970s and 1980s, a time when cricket was not just a sport but a symphony of power, skill, and unyielding spirit. And the maestros of this symphony were none other than the West Indies cricket team. They were the titans of the pitch, their prowess unmatched, their victories resounding. From Kingston to Bridgetown, from Port of Spain to Castries, they were more than players. They were heroes, inspirations, the embodiment of Caribbean pride. Charismatic figures like Clive Lloyd, Viv Richards, and Michael Holding led the charge, their distinctive styles of play leaving spectators and opponents alike in awe. Their string of victories was not merely a testament to their skill, but a symbol of regional unity and strength. Their dominance on the field reflected the socio-political landscape of the time. Cricket became more than a game. It became a vehicle for asserting West Indian identity against the backdrop of a post-colonial world. Every victory was a celebration, every performance a source of pride. They galvanized a region, inspiring a sense of national identity that transcended the boundaries of individual islands. But as with all great stories, the path to glory was not without its challenges. And as the sun set on their reign, the stage was set for a dramatic turn of events. Join us as we delve into the rise and fall of the West Indies cricket team. The journey of the West Indies cricket team began in the 1880s when the first combined team was formed. These were humble beginnings, a group of passionate players from across the Caribbean islands coming together to form a united front. This unity was not just about bringing together different countries, but also bridging cultural and linguistic divides. It was an endeavor that required not just skill on the pitch, but also a shared vision and commitment off it. Their first tours took them to the cold climes of Canada and the United States, far from the sun-soaked pitches of their homeland. Yet, even in these unfamiliar surroundings, they showcased their talent and resilience, hinting at the greatness that was to come. They were ambassadors of the sport, carrying with them not just their cricketing skills, but also the spirit of the Caribbean. Their performances caught the attention of the world, signaling the arrival of a new force in international cricket. Players like Charles Olivier, one of the early stars of West Indies cricket, stood out. Their skill and determination set the stage for the rise of the West Indies in the cricketing world. Olivier, with his exceptional batting skills, was a pioneer, setting records and breaking barriers. He was a beacon of hope for many young cricketers in the region, inspiring them to dream big and strive for excellence. As the sport took root in the region, it was embraced by all classes. This democratization of cricket played a significant role in the West Indies' success, bringing forth a wealth of talent from across the social spectrum. Cricket became a unifying force, transcending social and economic boundaries. It became a symbol of hope and ambition, a vehicle for social mobility, and a source of national pride. Thus, from its formation in the 1880s, through the trials of its initial tours, to the victories that heralded its rise, the West Indies cricket team etched its mark on the sport. Their journey was not just about winning matches, but also about overcoming adversities and breaking down barriers. It was a testament to their relentless pursuit of excellence and their unwavering commitment to the sport. But as they say, every rise has a fall, and the champions were not immune to this inevitability. As with all great dynasties, the reign of the West Indies cricket team was not destined to last forever. The first signs of trouble began to surface in the late 1980s, manifesting both on and off the field. On the pitch, the talent that had once been the team's greatest strength began to dwindle. Key players were past their prime, and the younger generation struggled to fill their shoes. This talent gap began to affect the team's performance and game results. The once formidable team was now a shadow of its former self, with its once vibrant energy replaced by a sense of defeat. The implications of this talent drain were far-reaching, 
the team's prowess on the field diminished, affecting their ability to compete at the highest level. The once dynamic and powerful West Indies cricket team was now losing its competitive edge. The talent gap was not just an issue of individual player performance, but a systemic problem that affected the team's overall strategy and execution. The lack of emerging talent meant that there were fewer options for the team to choose from, limiting their tactical flexibility. The impact of this decline was evident in games like the 1988 Test Series against Pakistan, where the previously invincible West Indies suffered a shocking defeat. This loss was a wake-up call for the team and its supporters. It signaled a shift in the cricketing landscape, with the West Indies no longer the indomitable force they once were. The defeat was not just a blow to the team's pride, but also a stark reminder of the consequences of complacency and lack of forward planning. Off the field, administrative turmoil further compounded the team's troubles. Disputes over pay and player contracts created an environment of uncertainty and tension, detracting from the team's focus on the game. These disputes were not just about money. They were symptomatic of deeper issues within the administration. Mismanagement, lack of transparency, and poor communication were some of the underlying problems that led to these disputes. The fallout from these disputes was far-reaching, impacting team morale and performance. The discord within the team was palpable, with players feeling undervalued and mistrusted. This had a detrimental effect on the team's cohesion and camaraderie, key elements for any successful sports team. The current state of West Indies cricket can be likened to a phoenix in ashes, waiting for the right moment to rise once more. This legendary team, which once dominated the cricketing landscape, now faces an uphill battle for relevance. The team's performance has been inconsistent, with losses outnumbering victories. In the face of adversity, West Indies cricket remains resilient. There is a glimmer of hope, a spark of potential that could ignite the team's revival. It may be a long journey, but the path to resurgence is clear. In the words of cricketing legend Sir Vivian Richards, it's not how you fall, it's how you get back up. The future of West Indies cricket lies not in its past glory, but in its potential for resurgence. With careful planning, strategic changes, and unwavering determination, the phoenix of West Indies cricket can rise from the ashes once again.